Hello everyone, Escapade is back once again with another edition of the Zoom podcast. Today we are joined with former guest and good friend of the studio, Grum or Graham. And uh, actually you were on episode 33 of the podcast, so definitely go and check that out if you haven't seen it. Uh, but we're glad to be joined with you again today. Graham, Grum, how you doing? Hey Stephen, yeah I'm not too bad, thanks. Crazy times, man. Eh? We've just been talking a wee bit off camera there, and you were saying that you live on your own. So you've been on your own this whole time. How how you been coping with that? How's that been? Yeah, um, yeah, it's been well. You know, I think at the start it was like, okay, I, I can do this. I'm used to I'm used to sitting in the studio all day by myself <laughs> making tunes. And after a couple of weeks, it it you know it feels a bit oppressive in a way. I would say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, even you know even if you don't want to go do something the, the thought that you can't <laughs> is uh it's sort of difficult to deal with but it um, feel limited doesn't it definitely yeah yeah it's quite uh, strange and again it's funny that you say that like not much has changed in the terms of you usually are in the studio banging it out anyway but when yeah. certain freedoms are taken away you're a wee bit like oh, can i kind of want to go and do things that i don't usually do so um yeah, yeah you're okay though, you've been getting by, how's, generally, how's the mental, mental health been? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm managing, you know, it's, <laughs> I'd, I'd say there's definitely ups and downs. Um, I've spoken to a few other people who've said the same thing, it's, it, it does something weird to your mind, like there's, you have, you have good days and you can have a couple of days where you just, you know, you, it's, you know, you feel a bit down. Yeah. Um, but um, overall, I'm all right, I'm managing. Um, it's good to talk to people, you know, talk to people online, and you, even if you can't in real life. Um, I mean, we we had quite a strict lockdown in Scotland, um, and ours ours is still stricter than England at the moment. So we're yeah. Well, today, today actually a big move's happened where you can now meet in groups mm-hmm. under eight people. Um, I've seen that. And no, you know, no, still again, no kind of like, you know, going into the house and things like that. But I would imagine people are going to start having some garden parties and, you know, meeting with some friends, which is ultimately going to be good for everybody's mental health. I think so. Yeah. I think, um, I, th- I think people definitely need that. You know, we're, we're social creatures. We need to be, we need to have contact with people, even if it's two meters away, you know. <laughs> Um, but hopefully it doesn't make the you know the virus worse or anything like that. But we'll see, I guess, in a few weeks. How much uh, how much time have you been spending on your phone during this time? Because I know I've been spending a lot more. And to be honest, it's doing my nut in, man. Yeah, yeah, it's, same. It's it's so easy, uh, just to fill your time with messing around on your phone. Yeah, I've I've I've, I've been trying trying not to. Um, what's been working for me is. Um, I've got a chair which I like to sit in, um, which I don't do work in. I don't watch TV in. Um, I've got a bunch of books. Um, and just kind of sit there and have a flick through some bits and pieces, and it helps to kind of uh, take my mind off things and um, disconnect a little bit. Instead of rushing to the phone and just quickly swiping, I mean, it's, it's yeah, like, exactly. yeah. how do you occupy your time? I've recently just bought a colouring book. And it's an Italian themed yeah. one, so it's like the Italian and Tower of Pisa and like different things. <laughs> and it's literally the next thing you know, three hours have been by, you've not looked at your phone, you've not really thought of anything else, and you're like looking at this cool image. It's, yeah. It's definitely recommended. That's Music, yeah. getting on with that, are you being creative? Because obviously, as you say, there has totally been ups and downs, myself included, all of the, the Escapade team have been the same, but mm. we've been. You know, we've been pretty good firing in all cylinders, but we have our moments, we have our days. Music-wise, how do you find? Because when you've got this overwhelming sort of looming thing out there, it's sometimes hard to create, but sometimes that can be a good thing, sometimes a bad. So how are you managing it? Um, I, 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 honestly, I, I don't really feel like it's affected my music that much. I'm, when, I've, when I've been able to sit down and do work, work on things, it's been, I've, I've had quite good results. Um, it's it's more the fact that um, well we the the kind of business has changed like overnight and that, like now um, there's a lot more streaming um, we're running the deep state Twitch channel um, so we're doing I'm I'm doing a stream every two weeks um, mm-hmm. and then we're doing like a guest every week so like somebody who's releasing on the label or 
you know, a, a friend of the label or a friend of mine or, you know, just music that we like. Um, so that, that's another, you know, that, that's kind of taken up some time um, and sort of running the, running the label and growing that kind of thing. So I've, I've been quite busy really with other things outside of making music, but, um, you know, it's not, it's not too bad. It's nice having time to, to work on these things. Yeah, I would, I would say so. Now you're talking about the Twitch streams. I'd actually taken a couple of notes, and I know recently you've been playing a lot of sort of '80s influence stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and that that sort of correlates back to the last podcast that we had with you when you were just releasing the Deep State album. Now the label's here, which is exciting. What's happening with that? How are you feeling about that? Was it quite nervous to launch? How? What's happening? Um. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, do, running your own label is, uh, that's like everyone's dream, isn't it? It's um, sort of curating what music you like and putting it out there for the world. It's every DJ's dream, I think. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've been, I'd wanted to do that for ages. Um, um, working with a new manager who's good on all that stuff. So we, we set it up. Um, and, yeah, it, it's been going well. I mean, I'm, I'm really happy with the music we're putting out. It's think we're carving out our own little niche in the progressive world um we've got um uh, an ep by uh, sia coming out next week yeah. um they've done some good stuff on angina beats and some big remixes of uh, pet shop boys and uh, medusa and things like that so we're really happy to have them on the label um and then coming up after that we've got um there's a guy called midge um it's kind of like new new talent for me anyway um so we've got we've got a mix of more established people and new new artists, and we're we're building this little little world. What can people expect sound wise from the label? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I've been trying to define that. I, I don't really know what it is. It's like, see, when I when I look at progressive um, house on Beatport or whatever now, there's a lot of stuff that's quite like, you know, it's nice, but it's a wee bit ploddy, lower energy, and for me, it's always been a bit a bit more energy like. 126 BPM upwards um, and you know there's always got to be a strong hook in there um, good atmosphere so energy and melody so like still kind of progressive stuff but a little bit more energetic on the proggy side because you're, you're totally right when I think of progressive I think more kind of chilled out warm up you know, like big euphoric sort of nice pads and melodies and stuff, but maybe not necessarily like banging. Mm -hmm. um, so are you going to try and find a bit of blend of something that you could play kind of decent mid set, but still would be considered that progressive? Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah, definitely. That's it. I mean, I mean, progressive has changed throughout the years what it meant. So much. You know, it keeps changing. So we're, we're this is my version of it, <laughs> if you like. Well, that's what a label should serve, isn't it? It's, it shouldn't really be something that you're doing to please others or, or in like that. It's more like you're wanting to get out a sound of something that you believe in and accumulate certain artists and even friends sometimes that maybe fit into that category. Yeah, exactly. thing. yeah, yeah, that's that's what I want to do. Um, and I love that as well. I love that. Yeah, and it's, I was going to say, it's, it's not... Um, for me, it's not really about... Um, you know, selling the most records or getting the best chartings. Obviously, that stuff's good, but really, it's just about putting out music that we really like. So, so see the stuff that you're doing on the Twitch streams. Is that the type of stuff that you want to play when you get back into the clubs and stuff? Because it seems like you're moving in a little bit more of a, you know, I don't. I think you're taking people on a really nice melodic journey, which you always have. But I think. You know, I, I know one of the guys in the studio is a big fan of yours as well, and, and he said that's certainly some of the comments he's made in terms of, I wonder if Grum's going to play more like that in the club scene and stuff. So is that, you, you reckon, or are you just experimenting because you're on a stream? Um, yeah, I, to be honest, it started off more as, um, we, with, with Twitch and streaming, we've now got this platform where we can, um, we can play music we wouldn't normally play. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was the idea. It kind of shows shows another side to you, where you know, whereas people normally come see you play and you play your you play your big tracks and your forthcoming tracks and things like that. So it was really just a way to uh, try and express that. Um, but I definitely think that after this, there'll, there will be some changes as to how things work in terms of what sets people can play, and hopefully, it'll things will open up a bit and 
you know, maybe, maybe we'll do an 80s tour or something, you know, that might be fun. Um, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. A big shirt on and... <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep them on it. <laughs> now, you've also recently, uh, we've noticed you've been giving away some edits and stuff like that that you've been playing yeah. out over the years. So is there going to be any teasers to any tracks that we can expect next? Or are you getting any dirty remix things? Any, any, you know, what, what sort of quirky things are happening with that? Yeah, so we're just, honestly, there's, there isn't really too much of a plan. It's just whenever I feel like it, um, we'll, I'll put something out. I'll choose, I'll choose something that, um, well, you know, there's also a copyright issues to consider. So, you know, we're, we're trying to get permission to do, to do them. Um, you know, it's, it's like we want to keep an element of surprise and also give, give them out in different ways. So the first, the first one came out... Um, uh, what did we do? It was just, I think I just gave out a link. Um, or it was, a, you know, it was signed up to the emailing list, email, uh, to the mailing list. Um, second one, I gave the link out during a Twitch stream. Um, it's just a nice surprise. So we're, we're finding different ways to do it. Um, I think maybe for the last one, I'll put it on a USB stick and hide it somewhere and people have to find it. <laughs> what would you say your, your benefits are with streaming on Twitch? Are you finding, are you, are you enjoying Twitch? Are you quite liking it? Um, yeah, it's, um, it seems the most developed of all the platforms at the moment. Um, like Facebook has issues with, um, copyright strikes. All the time. I mean, I haven't used it for streaming, but I've, I've seen that happening. Um, so Twitch seems to be good at the moment. Um, it's, it's quite well set up to, to grow a fan base as well. Um, I mean, if you look on there, there's all people doing all, all kinds of things with thousands of viewers and yeah. Yeah. It seems it seems like it's really well set up to, to, to grow your streaming fan base. So we're, I'm quite happy on there. I've been doing a wee bit of the odd gaming stream on Twitch. Oh, have you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been like. doing a bit of that. And I think, I think it is, it's a cracking platform. It's very easy to set up. And as you say, like the whole copyright thing, I mean, it's one of the reasons we really stopped doing the Escapade live stream as much. I think mm -hmm. in the beginning... We had, it was fine, you would never get taken down unless maybe someone played something really commercial or, or something that would get flagged up. But now, I've seen guys that have got their own label and their own track and that's getting flagged up. <laughs> and yeah. like, that's his track. Yeah, it's, so, it's crazy. They, they need, they, I think they really need to work something out there or modernise the system or come to some rights agreement with the publisher. You know, it's in need of modernisation. Well, like anything, Facebook or whatever, it, it learns from other companies' mistakes and things, and then, you know, they just implement their own thing. So hopefully yeah. it's that, because I guess it still is the primary platform that people use yeah. at and Instagram. I, yeah, I, I, did, um, I did a stream for Colours um, last weekend. How did that um, go? Yeah, it was good. Well, it was good. Um, I, I couldn't go do it live, but we, we, we did like a pre-recorded set. Um, and just that was the first set that kind of streamed on my Facebook and um, the engagement was really good. Like it was, you know, so Facebook still has that reach. So if they can sort out the copyright stuff, I'm sure people will come back. Well, it shows there is a demand. People still want to hear from you. I think when you do build up a fan base and it goes into a moment like this, like, you know, there's, I've had so many mixed opinions. We've had so many artists on and people are like, there's not one, you know, there's no point in releasing any music just now. Then I've heard other people like, this is the exact time to release music. So mm. in terms of that, what do you think? Because obviously you've just got the label, you're pushing forward with things. Do you feel that that's been affected? Do you feel that the thirst is gone or do you feel it's more? What's, what do you think about the industry right now? Um, yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we're still pushing on with, with releases, um, with, with um, Deep State and Anjuna Beats as well. There's, we're, you know, we've still got the same release schedules. So I think at the start we were concerned that it would affect things, but um, I think the way to get through this is just to keep, keep going. Um, cause if, if you, if you stop because there's no clubs and things, it's like, you know, well, maybe the music didn't hold up in the first place anyway. Um, mm, good point. If it's good, good music, it's good and people want to hear it. So, um, I mean, looking, looking at streaming numbers as well, they're down a little bit, I think because people would normally listen on a commute uh, to work or home again. Um, so they're down a little bit, but not, not much, like 10% maybe. So... People still want to hear good music, basically. 
do you feel that the lack of gigs at the moment has changed the way you make music in any way? Because again, I know some artists that maybe make tunes for gigs or edits that they go in the gig and then they do their, their research and they go, right, I know that this track does well, so I'm going to make stuff like this. Or, so has that changed? Because I know it's changed it for a few, but not everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah, I th the main thing actually is just having more time. Um, like before, you know, you're in this, um, you're in this cycle where you're, you play the weekend, you come home, you need a day to, you know, chill out. You get like two days in the studio and then you're away again. And then you're like, come back to finish that thing you're working on and you're like, oh, we're, you know, <laughs> it takes you a while to get back into what that state of mind you're in. So really it's nice just having this time and not too much pressure right now to, um, to just grind stuff out. Um, so I, th I, think, I think it's going to end up with better music um, from everybody, to be honest. Um, that's what, certainly for myself, I feel like I'm, I, I feel like, like a weight is lifted a bit and I don't have to just um, rush things in a way. Well, I mean, I honestly hope this also serves as a way for people to make what's in their hearts as opposed to just constantly making stuff for a just yeah. a specific thing. Like, actually just yeah. make kind of what you want to do. You've got more time to experiment on some other things and, and let the palette expand a little bit, you know. And like any good DJ, they, they play multiple things. Um, yeah. But it's cool to make different, different stuff as well. Now, last time we had you on the podcast, the, the, I mean, the album had just dropped and, and things. So what? how do you feel that went? Are you happy with it? And, you know, what sort of stuff did you have lined up and now that has been obviously stopped because of this, a world pandemic, you know what I mean? Stop Grum's album. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I mean the, album, yeah, the album came out in uh, November. Um, yeah, it's, it's gone pretty well. Um, you know, we did, did all the iTunes number one dance chart kind of things and uh, um, I think we've that's amazing yeah um, we uh, yeah we, we did all the signed vinyl um, I think that's most of that's gone now um, yeah I mean it's yeah good good response um, overall pretty happy um, and we're, we're doing um, we're actually I think we're announcing it to, yeah we're announcing it today we're, it's called um, Deep State Deluxe um, and it's it's like the final version with all the extended mixes for you know DJs, um, and plus there's a couple of acoustic versions from the singers. Mm -hmm. uh, so Dom has done an acoustic version of Tomorrow, which is really good, and Natalie has done an acoustic version of Afterglow, uh, which is also great. So nice package there. So that's coming out uh, Monday. And that's and that's on Deep State. No, uh, on Juno Beats. On on on, on Juno, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Class, class. So what's the schedule looking like for the label then? Because obviously you're an in-demand in artist with certain labels. So have you got obligations, contracts to still fulfill with those guys and, and still do like a few tracks before you, are, like, are you going to start releasing your own stuff on the label? Because I guess that's always the sort of struggle that a lot of people maybe coming up are always thinking. They're like, is it too soon for me to start the label? Then these other labels might be put off me things like that because again all this is stuff that our followers and people that watch or listen you know they, they, they want to know stuff like this because you know you are doing really really well and pushing things out there so how you know how are these labels taking the fact that you're starting one and and if any of this is too personal or too whatever then just tell me shut up but like <laughs> just I'm interested to kind of see how you are navigating that yeah um no, yeah, we've we've got well. So for the Deep State label, um, we've we've got the normal, normal release schedule. We're doing one release a month um, by by other artists um, because because um, I'm still signed to Anjuna Beats um, for we're doing another album. Um, so that's kind of what I've been starting to work on. Um, so Deep Deep State is for other artists um, for now, and um, I mean. We, we've talked about doing maybe an EP for me on Deep State as well, like something more underground. Um, you know, my, my, my more accessible stuff would be on Juno Beats and maybe my more uh, underground stuff on Deep State. So that might happen at some point too. Would that be an alias? No, uh, no. <laughs> well, that's, I'm glad, I'm glad, you know, I think that's, an alias can be good. I definitely mm -hmm. think it, it definitely can, but I also love when an artist starts expanding under their name. 
Um, so that's cool. So, so still an obligation basically to, to do some stuff. So, but you can at least get the label up and running. But again, I think this is great. This is a great insight. It's things that people don't know or, or don't think about. And, you know, they're like, mm. why have a label, not release your own stuff? It's like, well, it actually makes sense because then you at least kick things off. You get the wheels in motion. You keep building your name. And then when your release comes, hopefully it does really well on your own label. Because that's the goal on it, man, releasing your own stuff, man. That's, that's Jay-Z level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully someday. <laughs> one a month, one a month then. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, and how yeah. far up the schedule have you done? Um, we're, uh, I think we've, what have we done? Five or six so far? Something like that. Um, yeah, we're, yeah, one a month feels quite good. It means we can keep, keep it good quality. Um, you know, if you go to like, for, for a small label, if you go up to like two, four a month, it's like, you know, I want to keep it really good, good quality. I think, uh, you know, quantity is definitely not better. Um, mm -hmm. You know, especially, you know, depending on what the label is as well. You know, some, you know, certainly there's loads of artists out there that will basically just hear a sound and then try and make something exactly like that. And it's like, well, I've already signed that. I'm looking for something a bit diverse with, with hints of this sort of flavor. Um, well, I mean, I know I certainly, um, a couple of guys, you know, I'll speak to you after as well that, you know, potentially, you know, maybe probably send some stuff your way and, you know, sure, yeah. and that's definitely awesome. How, so how can people that maybe, you know, obviously you're the label owner, so you're going to have certain people in your mind, but you're going to take fresh demos as well as is any label. So how, what, any pointers for people sending you stuff? Do they just send you a link and just not say anything? Do they say <laughs> something nice? Give us a wee tip for some of the viewers that are maybe going, oh, I'd love to get something on Deep State. Sure. Um, yeah, we're, I mean, I'm, we're definitely open to anybody, you know. Um, I, I'm, I'm, looking for, um, I'm looking for producers that have something unique and something, something to say, I guess, um, doing their own thing. Um, and, yeah, if, if they want to send a, a demo, the email is deepstatetransmissions at gmail.com. Okay. Um, I check it like once a week, so I'll try try and get back to everything as well. I mean, no excuses then for people, and we will add that. Uh, we'll get that added in somewhere in the bio as well, just in for yeah, yeah, questions and stuff. You know, try and help you out in any way. You ju you just never know what gem you might be sent. You know, that's it. Yeah, and um, in, in terms of um, you know, the pitch. Um, to be honest, um, I'm trying to think like. There's some where I've seen it and I'm like, I don't want to listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think sim simple and friendly is, is fine. <laughs> I think that's so overlooked, though, oh, man. It's overlooked. It's, uh, you know, and even... It's uh, and polite. That's it. Uh, and, and even, like, there was, uh, you know, one guy or some, you know, some people that we know as well, you know, they've maybe copy other labels into the email. They'll send you a SoundCloud link with, like, nine listens to it already. Yeah, uh, that's a wee bit... Uh, yeah. Things you should avoid, hopefully, is just send a fresh link every time yeah. and uh, don't be sharing it with everybody all the same time. Even if you've already sent it to 20 other labels and they said no. Exactly. The person you can, I'll never know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. The thing is, you must, it's going to be, obviously this is a bit premature because the label's just starting and it's kicking off, but you can, if you think back over your career, right, and you think of the labels and the different people and, you know, times that you've networked and you've met someone who's opened a door for you. And you've, you know, when you look and you can reflect back now and go, God, if I never signed that track there or never met that get person, I would never have, you know. It's like now you're potentially going to start opening doors for people. How does that feel? That must be quite a nice feeling. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's something I'm um, quite, quite happy about. Um, it's nice. It's nice to help people that I like what they're doing, you know. Um, so it's, um, yeah, it's a nice feeling. I mean, hope, hopefully I can help some people get their careers going. Yeah. Help that's, them that's that. Because you think of that feeling when you get the email back from someone that you looked up to that says, hey, Graham or whatever. Yeah, it's not for me, but keep sending until they were like, here, by the way, that's a track, right? We're signing it. You know, yeah. that, that, that feeling is, uh, is a great feeling. I mean, I've seen that happen loads of times with, with Mr. Kirkwood, you know, where he's had the knockbacks and then finally the door's been opened and that, and it's a good thing. So it's going to be cool 
for yeah. you to start being that guy. I mean, it's weird how oh, yeah. it works out, isn't it? I actually remember years ago when I first started out sort of sending music out um, back in uh, MySpace days. Um, and um, I, I worked on my music for a while and I got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm ready. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send this out. And it was like messaging artists that I liked on MySpace, just, you know, like 20 of them. And I think maybe, I think, I can't even remember who, but like three of them got back to me. Um, and that, that just made my, you know, it just made my, made my day, made my month, whatever. Um, I think, I, actually, I think one of the guys that got back to me was like um, Breakbeat guys. I think it was maybe like Freak Nasty or Plump DJs or something. They got back to me and I was like, yeah, this is cool. <laughs> so if I can be that guy, then good. <laughs> And, and this is it, and the thing is, like, through social media, artists who are just human beings are more accessible now. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's a numbers game as well. It's kind of like, you know, I think as well, with you know, when it comes to people's projects and their music, it's like they become so precious over their own thing that mm-hmm. I'm only sending this to two labels, and then if they get knockbacks, they're sitting beating themselves up all night. And it's like, well, there are other labels, don't worry. You know, yeah. Some- yeah. So sometimes there's, sometimes the the path that you take is not the one that you thought you would take. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, you you might think of yourself as X, you know, um, but in fact you're something. You know, you're Y or something else. And there's different paths you can take to success. Um, like I'm, I mean, I'm probably a good example. Like I, you know, I started out doing more electro, and kind of 80s stuff, and somehow ended up on Anjuna beats. Um, I would I would never project, predicted I was going to be on a trans label <laughs> like uh, twelve years ago. So just naturally um, happened. It just, yeah, these things just happen, and sometimes you just you just take the path that's that works. There is no official blueprint. <laughs> nope. I mean that is mad to think is that like we spoke about that in the last podcast. Um, you know, you'd done remixes for like gold frap and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like really early on in your career as well. Like it, yeah. is, it's, it has totally morphed. And to be honest, give it another five, ten years, it'll morph again. Yeah, and I think that's it's also a good way to to keep growing is to to do that. You know, um, uh, you know, personally, my tastes change as well over time. Of course, um, everybody's does so. Like if you if you spend twenty years just pumping out like the same thing, it's like, well, why did you do that? You know, I want to keep, I want to keep growing, um, yeah. keep developing, and that keeps it fun for me. You'd mentioned earlier about saying like at one point, um, you know, you are just destroying the room there. <laughs> um, like, <laughs> you wouldn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like you'd mentioned in like um, having the track ready to send out and like mm. that was that I finally worked on it enough and go right that's I'm going to send out to labels how in the hell do you know when you're ready because that's probably the thing we spoke about in a lot of the podcasts 95 percent of the clients come to the studio that work on production or whatever they're like they've got a million great ideas but it's actually finishing something that's at a standard to send out what do you do when you're someone that works on your own that maybe doesn't have professional friends that can give you the professional feedback and stuff like that and you're working on your own but you've been on Ableton or Logic or something like that for like five years when are you ready? Um, That's a good (laughs) one. That's a good one. Um, I I don't know it's like I think I think in the first place you have to have a kind of a vision of what you're trying to do Mm-hmm. Um, so that you know roughly where the end point is. Um, for for me, it's it's like I, I put ideas down, and it, if I feel like I can't take anything else away, then it's probably done. You know, it's like you try and remove things so that it's it works as simply as possible. Mm-hmm. Like that tends to work for me. I mean, that's a good point. I mean, Stephen puts it in a way. It's like when you're changing zero point one. Of a desk, yeah, that's another good one. one. Yeah. Or that, it's like, right, we need to. This is that. It's done. Yeah, I mean, I still do that. So I still, I still get stuck in that trap sometimes. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think everybody still does that. But uh, like mu- musically, in terms of the, you know the composition and things, I think it's um, if you if it all works, and you if you take anything if you take something away and it doesn't work anymore, 
or if you add something and it feels like it doesn't need it, then it's probably done. Right, different direction, right? Let's say tomorrow or but as of next week, lockdown's over, everything completely goes back to normal, right? What is the dream first return gig for Grum? What venue, where, what? Um, hmm. uh, anywhere in the world? Anywhere, anywhere you want. Uh, okay. Um, probably be, you know, it would probably be a smaller party. Be like a, like a Sunday, a Sunday daytime, all day party somewhere would be really nice. Um, I did a couple um, last year in the US. There was one in Phoenix. Um, and there was one in San Francisco. Um, and they were awesome. Like just a small party. I did like three, four hour set. Um, and in the sunshine, I think that would be perfect. That sounds that does sound splendid. That sounds yeah. splendid. now. Um, a couple more things before we wrap up. So, um, what have you got coming up or stuff that you want to promote for people where they can come see you next when your next Twitch stream and releases and things like that? Just give us a wee rundown of the schedule, sure. Um, so in terms of releases, we've got uh, Deep State Deluxe on Monday. Um, Maybe yep. Um, I've done a remix for Amtrak. I don't know when that's coming out, but I think it's coming out this summer. Um, what else? We have uh, the Sia EP out June the fifth. I think that's Friday. Okay. Um, so that's releases, and in terms of streams, um, I'm doing one on Monday on Anjuna Beats channel, um, and that's Deep State Deluxe playthrough. Um, and I'm going to tell some stories about the album and uh, yeah, we're just going to have a wee final Deep State album party. Next, um, we'll make sure to share that as well. Yep, and on Tuesday I'm doing um, a live radio stream. So I do the Deep State radio every month. Um, we're going to do a live special on Tuesday on Twitch on the Deep State channel. Uh, and that, yeah, that's what we got coming up. Excellent, man. So plenty, plenty stuff. Keeping busy, that's what it's all about, especially now in the next few weeks. It looks like, uh, look, you know, the measures are going to start kind of coming off as a wee bit, so we yeah. can start getting uh, things. It would obviously be great to get you back down the studio at some point again as well. Um, yeah, that's it. One last question before we wrap up, which we've been asking every single artist that's been on. Um, recommendations of DJs and artists set uh, you know, maybe a, a track people haven't really heard of, just something that's floating your boat or your go-to set or something like that. We're just looking for people to give us over a wee, what they're mm -hmm. into, something a wee bit different. Sure. Um, uh, <laughs> Wait, it's put everybody in the spot, don't worry. <laughs> These are all tricky. Let me look in my iTunes for, oh, for a track. Because we've heard all sorts, like we've we've had all sorts of cool, cool recommendations and stuff, you know, some real, yeah. real beautiful stuff and, and different types of sets and, um, you know, we've, we've had all sorts. Actually, I'm, I'm just remembering, um, what are the guys called? Is it, I think it's Desert Hearts. Um, it's like the Burning Man party. Um, I think it's Desert Hearts. Anyway, I caught their uh, Twitch stream a few times and that was really good fun. Um, I don't know who was playing. I don't know what the music was, but it was it was great music. So um, I'll double check that and I'll send you the link. Maybe you can I'll add check it. Check those guys out then. No, that's yeah, that's definitely. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah, really good. It's like uh, kind of like party house music. Like, good stuff. Gets the gets the, the 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 weekend vibes going. Yep. When you're sat at home <laughs> waiting for one down. <laughs> exactly. That's it. That's it. Well, look, mate. Thanks so much for joining us again. Um, it was really nice to, to just catch up with you. Yeah, yeah, you too, man. Thanks for having me on. And um, Trips Remember, and we did do episode 33 with Grum already, which is a great, great episode, and nice HD quality as well, not not a Zoom podcast. Um, but the, the recent one is great, so go and check out all the recent music. Go to Beatport Monday, go and support Grum's music and, you know, his new label and stuff like that. You need all the help you can get when you're just kicking things off as well. So, you know, we'll certainly get a wee, uh, 
a wee share. And remember to go and check out the new website as well, Troops. Got loads of new stuff on there, loads of new things that are popping off, and of course the podcast. So until next time, another episode of the podcast, the Escapade Show. Thanks everyone to Grum. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Till next time. <laughs>